Hey there, Chris here from Swatera Media. I wanted to show you something kind of cool that I've been working on for a little bit. It aims to solve a problem that I've run into a lot of times with Fusion. Because while Fusion has a wonderful camera tracker, one of its limitations that it's had, I think for I don't know how many years I've looked back and saw posts all the way back to like 2017 one of its big limitations is it doesn't allow you to export a point cloud from your 3d scene that you've solved and while this isn't the end of the world because you can always set up reference geometry inside of fusion and then export that as a part of the fbx file it is sometimes nice to have that reference in your 3d package now the solution that I've come up with is only for Blender uh, because that is the 3D package of choice that I use. Maybe if enough people ask for it, I can look into how to make it for like Maya or something like that as well. But as of right now, this is just going to be a an add-on for Blender. Now the name of the add-on is called Fusion Bridge and I'll have a link either in the description or in a pinned comment for a link to our website where you can go and read more about it and also download the uh, add-on, which is going to be free. And paired with it too is a very simple node uh, that I created very quickly within Fusion as well. That'll help things out, but I'll show you how it all works. So we have a pretty simple scene here. Just found some random footage to track. And all I've done is used a Mocha to create some mats just to knock out stuff I don't want to track. And then I've gone ahead and tracked some points here just like you normally would. This isn't a video about how to 3D track. I have uh, a couple of videos covering that already. So everything pretty much remains the same. Just come in, track, just like you normally would, update your scene, um, align things, um, and then go ahead and export your 3D scene. So we have all of this here. We'll wanna make a couple of changes. First of all, in our point cloud 3D, we want to make sure that we click make renderable in the point cloud node. Additionally, we we'll also want to switch the style from cross to point. Now what we're going to do is I have created a, uh, just a very, very simple node. I'm going to drag in here and this is just called geo to points. And all this is going to do is distribute a cube to each of these points here. So the way you do this, take the output of point cloud 3D, put it in the input of the geo to points and put that in the merge 3D. Now these cubes may end up being a little too small to see at this scale. Um, well, I can show you kind of what's happening behind the scenes, which is like I said, super simple. So if I disconnect these, this node is simply a replicate 3D node with a uh, shape 3D node and then all we do is we plug in the output of the shape 3D into the input of the replicate 3D we take the output of the point cloud 3D and plug that into the destination input on the replicate 3D we just change uh, this to a cube and this output goes in here and now we can see it a little better. The geo to points node actually scales down those cubes quite a bit, um, but they are there. Um, that was working properly. So I'm gonna just scale these down. So we've distributed these cubes onto it. And one of the other things that this uh, geo to points thing has set up automatically is to lower these subdivisions to one. So that way we're not importing more uh, vertices than we need to. So that is how this uh, geo to points node works. Um, so I'm going to replace, let's get rid of those. And we'll put the output of this into here. Now, one thing that is very important, you want to use the shape 3D node if you are going to do this on your own uh, without the geo to points node. The reason being the Blender add-on looks for the name shape 3D one shape 3d one zero shape 3d one one and so on and so forth so naming is very important with this add-on so we don't want to change anything basically it's going to expect a certain setup uh, when it goes through and analyzes the fbx file 
So speaking of which, we'll go ahead and get this exported. So we'll just choose our FBX exporter node and we'll find a place for this. And then we'll plug the output of the merge 3D into the input on the FBX exporter. And we'll make sure that our frame rate is correct, all that. Just in general with this type of work, we wanna make sure our frame rates and resolutions and aspect ratios and everything are all matching up nicely. Now, one known limitation is the Blender add-on does have an issue with the scaling feature that's built into it. Sometimes it does produce inconsistent results. So one of the things you'll want to do is make sure to do all of your scaling operations inside of Fusion. The best way to do that is within the uh, camera tracker. We want to make sure that our scale is set properly. By default, to Blender, these scenes that come out of Fusion are going to be very, 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 very small. So we want to scale it up quite a bit. As you can see, mine is currently set to 40. So that'll kind of give you a sense for things. So now that we're ready, we'll go ahead and export this FBX file. To do that in Fusion, inside of Resolve, we come all the way up to the top here and choose Fusion and then Render All Savers. Alrighty, so now we are over here in Blender. Now something I did do in between recordings is um, I reduced the number of points in the shot. I think we wound up with about 7,000 uh, or so tracking points previously. While it did end up processing all 7,000 of those points, I think it took about an hour to do it. So in the interest of saving a little time, I reduced it quite a bit down to about 2000 or so points. So let's go ahead and check out how this works on the Blender side of things. It couldn't be simpler. So this is the add on here. Now, of course, you can submit bugs to uh, this email address that we have written here. You also have the option of uh, submitting a form on our website, but it's probably not the best way to do it. The best way by far would be to uh, join up on our Discord server. I'll have that linked in the description and I probably will have a pinned comment with it as well. At the moment, things are a bit slow. But uh, we'll be working on that, trying to get some more cool people in there uh, to share their work and uh, give critiques to each other. And it should end up being a pretty cool time. We just want to create a space where people can come and get inspired and learn some new stuff. But anywho, to get this going, we'll first select our FBX that we exported. Now, the focal length here, that's going to be the focal length that was determined by Fusion uh, when it solved the camera. So we'll head back over to Resolve for a second. And we'll select the camera tracker node and we'll look right here. So it looks like we got 21.45 millimeters. So we'll plug that in here. Now these options here, including the resolution, they aren't necessary for the add-on to function. It's just a quality of life thing where this uh, add-on will just automatically plug in these values where they, are, where they belong. So the camera focal length will go into the camera that the add-on imports and then the resolution will be set to the uh, resolution of the project so it just saves a step now the reason for the focal length being necessary is for some reason when you import an fbx from fusion blender seems to have a hard time with uh determining the focal length because it's never in the camera itself so this just saves you that step and i do know that our project here is uh, 4096 by 2160 and I just want to get my stopwatch going and we'll just click process FBX. Now during the process of it going through and replacing all those cubes with empties, it will go into a frozen state, but as long as it hasn't crashed, it's still working. Now my computer has a, um, an i9 10900K and a Founders Edition 3090 um, and 64 gigs of RAM if you want to perhaps compare the time it takes for it to do this to your own hardware. Okay, so it looks like it took about 15 minutes to get here. Maybe I need a faster processor. It might be time, it might be time. So as we can see, our empties are a bit on the big side. So what we can do is just go in and scale them down. Now importantly, we wanna switch this to from individual origins.
And we can also delete this little backplate thingy that comes over from Fusion. And it looks like our resolution was set right. Now, something we'll also want to do is put in some background footage so we can get a look at this. And I'll just go ahead and select these so that we can see them a little bit easier. And it looks like they are lined up perfectly. Awesome. So this will give us quite a nice dense point cloud. Now first we'll set the cursor to selected and I'll add like a cube. Scale that down. Now I can very easily see where that's supposed to be. And that's sticking perfectly. Now another thing that we can do with this that's pretty cool is we can also generate mesh from empties. Now this is a pretty uh, robust algorithm that runs when you do this. So this can also take a while to reconstruct mesh from all of these points. So I'm just going to select a little bit of them. So it's going to try to create a mesh from those points. And this can be useful for all sorts of things. Um, I've used features like this in Nuke to create uh, very easy and very quick uh, geometry for things like shadow catchers. So once you have your points selected, we'll click on generate mesh from empties. Alrighty, so it is processed and so it'll look a little bit funky, <laughs> partially because this scene has a lot of organic shapes to it. So the points are a little all over the place, but um, also because this is very early. As you can see, it's made out of tries for now. That's something I'm gonna try to fix the future. I am so sorry I've committed a blunder sin. But we can take a look and see how it looks over top of our footage. I'm just going to switch it to wire and that is tracked in quite nicely. So for now, um, even if it can't be used for say a shadow catcher or something um, without kind of modifying this geometry a bit, it's also very good for getting an even better visual on where things are. And of course, this is going to be improving over time. Now the same rules apply. Obviously the more points that you select, the longer it's going to take for the mes mesh to generate. So you just want to give it time. As long as it's frozen, it's still working. <laughs> and just in general with this add-on, make sure to save often, just in case. Because there could be instabilities that I'm not aware of that under unique circumstances come to light, and I wouldn't want you to lose any work. But that about sums up all the features of this add-on as it currently stands. And just like with bugs, if you think of anything that you'd like me to add as far as features, you can submit it through the same channels. But I would uh, keep suggestions in uh, plain English as I am not a programmer. I got a little bit of help with this one. But that's where we'll go ahead and end it. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and watch. And I hope you get a lot out of this add-on. It was made for the community just to make people's lives a little bit easier. Fusion is a great package, and hopefully this will bridge that gap. Like I mentioned before, there are ways to submit bugs on our website. You can also join the Discord server that is linked in the description. And of course, on our website as well, you'll find links to the Fusion Bridge add-on, as well as the uh, Geoda Points node that I made for Fusion. As always, subscribe if you'd like to see more DaVinci Resolve-related things, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.